Hello, God bless you. Welcome to our daily video where we take a daily look at a Bible verse because just like we get hungry and we feed our physical bodies, we also need to feed our spiritual bodies. And we do that by reading the Bible, by getting along with God, spending time with Him, praying to Him, reading His Word. You can read a physical copy of the Bible. You can read a free Bible app. You can read one of the various free websites. But it's so very important to read the Word of God for yourself. With all the deception in this world, the Bible is the only truth that you can rely on. We give you a verse of the day, a, an appetizer, as I like to call it, with some discussion, and hope that you will open your Bibles up. You will complete the meal. You will read the verses before and after. This Bible is the bread of life. When you read the word, you get fed with that bread of life. When you seek God's face, seek his presence, seek him to give you understanding. It fills you with that living water that fills you up. It strengthens you in whatever you may be facing in this world. Jesus says that we cannot live by bread alone. The some at the bear we feed our bodies. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, it says that He's saying basically that just as it is important to feed our spiritual body, our physical body, excuse me, so that we can sustain our bodies and live, we need to also feed our spiritual bodies. Feast on that word of God. Feast on that bread of life. Be reading the Bible daily. Praying to Him daily. Seeking His face. We're going to be in a beautiful chapter and verse here today. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 open your Bibles and follow along or read on the screen Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 you see it in the title call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not isn't that beautiful this is the Lord talking if this was in the New Testament it was Jesus talking, this would be in red. That's one of the things I like about the King James 2000 book because everywhere where the Lord talks is in red. So in the King James 2000, this would all be red. This is the Lord saying, Call unto me. This is what God's saying to you. Call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. You know, whatever you're going through in this life, know that God is with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Those words are true. And whatever you're going through in this life, whatever problems you, that may persist in your life that you may be going through right now, maybe you're battling addiction, you're depressed, you're sick, you have a disease, you're sad, you're mourning somebody, maybe you're having financial troubles, struggling to put food on the table, struggling to pay the bills, maybe you're having marital problems, you and your spouse are arguing, well, maybe it's family problems, maybe your kids aren't listening, they're just rebelling, whatever it may be that you're facing this world, just run to God with it, seek Him to help you, and as it says, He'll show you great and mighty things. Things that don't seem possible. I like to use, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to doctors and nurses because they're definitely a blessing to us. And I definitely pray for them that God blesses them richly. But sometimes when we go to the doctor, they won't get to the root of the problem. They'll just give you a pill. And if it doesn't work, they'll up the dose. And if that doesn't work, they'll give you another pill, either to replace that pill or maybe in addition to it. But God will get to the root of the problem. So run to Him. So whatever it is that you have going on in your life, whatever that I, that I can't even understand, just you and the Lord know. Maybe maybe you have other people that don't that know as well. So I don't know what you're going through. That's what I'm trying to say. I have no idea what you're going through. 
But I do know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that God can bring you through it. All you got to do is open His Word. And that's what's so beautiful, beautiful about physical body, uh, Bible. Physical Bible, you open it up. And you read all four of those columns on both, both pages. And God will speak to you in His Word. All you got to do is open that Bible. Trust that God can help you. It may not be in your time, and it may not be immediate. You may say, Lord, I, rent's coming next week, and I don't, don't have the money. It may be, maybe it'll be the following week. You know, I don't know. But God is always on time. His timing is perfect. It's not our timing. So put your faith and trust in Him. Call on the name of the Lord. And God will answer you. Just like it says here, and I'll show you great and mighty things. He's shown me great and mighty things, and I'm nobody special. I'm just a fat guy living alone in an apartment. No wife, no kids, no family within a three and a half hour drive. I'm just someone that the Lord looked at past all my flaws. Because for I say this a lot, you probably get tired of hearing it. But for 20 years, I claimed to be a Christian, but did what I wanted to do. Saved at 13, baptized. But for 20 years, I lived how I wanted to live. At the, at the same time, I claimed I loved Jesus and claimed that I was saved and I was His. I had no idea who Jesus was. And for 20 years of saying I love Jesus but doing what I wanted to do, if it was up to me, I would say I'm done with you, God. Go on down the road. But that's not what God said. God looked at me and he said, I, even though you played games with me for 20 years, I still love you and I'm still welcoming you back. If you've done that for me, I'll do it for you. Because I am nobody special. I'm just a guy who's so grateful that God loved me enough to allow me to come back, to welcome me back, to draw me back, because the Spirit draws us. It's not us it's the Spirit drawing us, the Spirit calling out to us. You know, we have, you hear that verse. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus is talking. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And whosoever will open the door to me, I will come in. The Spirit draws us. And I'm so grateful that He, he drawed me. And if He did it for me, He's going to do it for you. So I pray this message this verse here just blessed you call on him trust in him seek his face just whatever you're going through just pray to him just say Lord I need you I'm going through and whatever it is just cry out to him with a sincere heart just say Lord I need help I can't do this on my own. Well, I pray this message blessed you. God loves you so much. You are not alive by accident. You were created for a purpose. God did not create you just to fill the earth with people, just to take up space. And much like any good parent, God only wants the best for you. God has a plan for you. When God formed you in your mother's womb, God had a plan for your life. You know, we all have this void in our life. Some call it God-shaped hole. A missing puzzle piece you try to fill it with everything that the world has to offer sex drugs alcohol money friendship power popularity houses cars money but nothing can fill that void only God that's why they call it a God-shaped hole that void is there because we all sin we all fall short of the glory of God there's none of us that are righteous not one that void that sin is there because we live in a fallen world 
Jesus is coming back to set up his earthly kingdom. And the requirement to enter this kingdom is that we must be absolutely perfect and without sin. But no one is without sin. We all mess up. We all miss the mark. We all sin. Sin means to break God's rules, neither thoughts or actions. We see here in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one is perfect. No one, not one. We see that in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no not one. That's echoed in Ecclesiastes 7.20. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. In 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 10 say, If we say that we have no sin, but deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. In verse 10 says, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So we're deceiving ourselves and calling God a liar if we say that we're perfect and don't sin. And there's a punishment for our sin. We see that in Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We all face eternal judgment and separation from God. This is why we must receive Jesus into our life as Lord. And believing what Jesus did is the greatest gift that we'll ever receive. It's a free gift of God of, of eternal life, not about works. No one can be saved by their own works. You cannot be a good enough person. We see here in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a free gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. In Galatians 2, 16, Knowing that the man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. We will never live long enough to even begin to pay for our salvation. Here's a word picture for you. If you don't accept Jesus' free gift, his get-out-of-jail-free card, and you stay in that spiritual jail cell. And the jailer opens the door and says that you're free to go someone paid your bail. But you're relying on your works, thinking you could be a good enough person. So you stay in that cell thinking that you can get your own way to heaven. That you doubt that there's only one way. That you think you can find your own way. Saying, no, I'm good. I'm a good person. God wouldn't send me to hell. I could get myself out of here. But you can never be good enough. So don't deny this free get out of jail ticket. You can still escape the spiritual jail cell. Because as you see, sin separates us from God. Not only does sin separate us from God, it's a valley gets deeper and wider with each sin. And that sin valley gets wider and deeper with every sin. So it separates us from God and man. You see how man is further from God now. Now the only way to atone for that sin and for God to fill that void in your life is by the shedding of blood. See it there, Hebrews 9.22. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. You see, in the Old Testament, they would use the blood of an animal sacrifice. The animal sacrifice was a temporary bridge to God. Once they sinned again, they would have to offer another animal. Because as they sinned, that valley would get deeper and wider. And see, what, look at what happens. It causes the bridge to collapse. God knows that we can never be good enough. That's why Jesus came and died on the cross. Jesus is the only one who lived a perfect life and became the substitute for our sins. Jesus always existed. Jesus is God. Jesus left his throne in heaven. He became flesh. He wasn't an angel. He wasn't a ghost. He wasn't a prophet. He was flesh and blood and bone, fully God and fully man. He lived a perfect, sinless life. Jesus came to the earth to die for all of us. Jesus was crucified on a cross, died a brutal death, was buried in a tomb. He was in that tomb for three days and three nights, and then he rose from the dead. Proving that he is God because death and the grave had no power over him. Jesus took our place, suffered God's wrath for us. The punishment that we all deserve. We've seen the wages of sin is death. We're guilty for our sins. We deserve the punishment. But the punishment was poured out on Jesus. God gave his son to the world to die in our place. Jesus paid God's price for our sins when he died on the cross. And our sins were nailed to the cross. Jesus nailed our sins to the cross with him. Jesus shed his precious blood for our sins. And Jesus' blood covered those sins so that we don't have to die. Jesus was sinless. He was an innocent of death. I mean, like any innocent man wrongfully arrested, Jesus died for us because of our sin, because we're guilty. We deserve God's wrath. The wages of sin is death. But Jesus loves us enough to die for us. Jesus is truly the only way to the Father. Or you see, John 
14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Because Jesus was perfect and never sinned, he was the only one worthy to pay the price for our sins. And just like the animal sacrifice had to be completely perfect with no spot, no blemish, no defect. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. Paid our debt. We're free to go. Jesus paid our debt in full when he died on the cross. He purchased us, redeemed us, brought us back to him. Purchased us with his blood, shed on the cross for us. Jesus paid for our sins long before we ever committed them. We see that in Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love towards us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. So long before we were ever born, Jesus paid the price for our sin in full. So don't wait until you overcome an addiction to your financially secure. Go to God now. He will help you through anything and everything that you're going through. The gospel can be summed up in John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't come to condemn you. He, he came and loved you. He knew that you couldn't be good enough, that you couldn't be perfect. So he came and died for you. Then Jesus ascended to the Father, ascended up to heaven. We're much like a courtroom. God the Father is the judge. Jesus, the Son of God, is our defense attorney. We see this in Romans 8, 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Also, 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there is one God, and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And Satan is the prosecutor. We see that in Revelation 12, 10. More so the last part where it says, the Satan's the accuser of the brethren, which accuses us before God day and night. So it's like a courtroom. The prosecutor tells God's all our sins. As you see here, it says, see what they did? They're guilty. But Jesus, our defense attorney, says, our sins are stricken from the record. Our sins are forgiven. Jesus paid the fine with his blood on the cross. You see it, those sins are stricken from the record. I paid those sins in full. Your salvation is a free gift from God. So receive this free gift that Jesus gave you long before you were born. You know, Jesus wants to save us from the penalties of our sins and give us eternal life. But we must first, individually, receive him. We see in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Acts 3, 19, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And just like works, don't get us into heaven. Neither does just knowing who Jesus is. You have to have Jesus in your heart, have a relationship with him. There's a big difference between knowing Jesus intellectually. Like you see there, what the guy has got in his mind, he knows about Jesus being on the cross. But there's a big difference between knowing him intellectually and have a relationship. So you see you got the one guy, he's got thinking about Jesus on the cross, this other one has Jesus in his heart, and they're hugging. So he's got a relationship with him. When you believe with Jesus in your heart, you talk to him in prayer. You read his word, the Bible. You put Jesus first before your family, before your job, before your money, whatever it may be. I like to think of it this way. Our sins put us in a jail, in a spiritual jail. So, where we await our trial, then suddenly the door opens. The jailer says that we're free to go. Someone paid our bail. That was Jesus. Jesus paid our bail. But we're running out of time. Jesus is really coming back soon. So we need to repent. Come back to God while you still can. Repent means to turn away, to change your mind, to do a 180, make a U-turn, change your behavior. It's that simple. It's ABC simple, in fact. Ask for admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Admit you can't do this on your own. Admit that you need Jesus. Be as for believe in your heart that Jesus is who he says he was. Believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. Believe that Jesus paid the price for your sins. Believe that Jesus did it all for you. See his call or confess. Call on the name of the Lord. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Confess and repent of your sins. Talk to God. Prayer is a conversation with God. And since he's present everywhere, you can speak aloud. Talk in your head. He will hear you. On the screen is a sample prayer you can say. Or you can use your own words. Just as long as it's from your heart. 
That's what we've seen in Romans 10, 9, and 10. You've got to believe in your heart. you got to really mean the words, and when you do, you'll be saved. But it's not about the prayer. It's about making that realization that you can't do this on your own. Prayers, ABCs of salvation, that's just a tool, but it's not what saves you. What saves you is having a complete repentance to changing your attitude and wanting to seek God, wanting to have a relationship with Him. And repentance, you know, it's, it's changing your attitude. I mean, I'll give this example that if I keep doing wrong to you and keep apologizing, but don't change my behavior, it's not going to mean anything. You're not going to accept my apology after a while. But if I if I say I'm sorry and I change my behavior and I don't treat you like that anymore, then you can you can forgive me easier. That's what repentance is: is changing your mind. You know, you're you're changing your attitude. You're not you're not doing repeating the same thing. I mean, we're all gonna mess up, but it's the I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna change my behavior. We have to change the behavior. We're saved through faith in Jesus. It's a free gift from God, 100% free. Don't think that you just gotta be good enough to earn it somehow because you can't. Just repent and believe in Jesus, then you'll be saved. But you must have a personal relationship with Jesus. Go to God first, not last. Wherever you are, God is with you. God craves you for a reason. When you accept Jesus' as free gift and invite Jesus in your life, then God gives you a new heart and begins to mold you into who he created you to be. God is continually molding us because even though we are saved, we will still sin because we're unfinished. God is working on us. It's like these Legos. I figure this is kind of the best explanation I can do. You see this Lego, it's just, dump, it's just a pile, right? It's like when you dump a, dump a box of Legos on a table. You're going to get a pile like this. It's not going to look like a house until you start snapping those bricks together. That's what God's doing. He's continually, just like snapping these bricks together, he's continually molding us into who he created us to be. It's not just a dump them out on the table and it's a house. No, it's a pile like that. That's a, just a pile of mess. Now we got to snap the bricks together to make the house. That's what God's doing with us. But read the Bible for yourself, because with all the deception in the world, the Bible is the only truth in the world. You need to know what the Bible says for yourself, because Jesus' return is imminent. He's coming soon. We see all the signs that Jesus talked about happening worldwide. Banks failing, wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, famines, pestilence. So don't wait, don't put Jesus off. Give your life to Jesus today while you still have the opportunity. Jesus paid the price for you as a free ticket waiting for you to enter into heaven. And all you have to do is take the opportunity today, turn to Jesus, and accept that free gift. And do it before it's too late. You don't have time to wait. Tomorrow might be at one day too late. I love you. Jesus loves you. I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. See you tomorrow, God willing. Or maybe we'll see you in the clouds. Have a great day.